welcome to the 2020 Brain and Transcranial Photobiomodulation Virtual Summit. I'm your host, Dr. Joe DiDuro, and my guest is Dr. Nivaldo, Parizzo Nivaldo Parizzotto. And uh, he comes to us from Brazil, where we'll see in a moment. He graduated with his master's degree in physiology and uh, completed his PhD in electrical engineering in 1998. He also completed his postdoctoral studies at the Wellman Center for Photomedicine at Harvard Medical School in the USA. Uh, he's a senior title professor at the University of St. Carlos, a visiting professor at the physiotherapy department at the Federal University of Paraiba in Hoa Pezoa. He'll, he'll tell us all that stuff. Hmm. And collaborating in the and biomed, it, it, in, I can't read all that, but it, you can read it in the thing. The point I want to tell is he's quite amazing. He's, uh, he's had more than 140 masters and more than 70 doctoral boards that he's sat on. He has supervised 22 master's dissertation, co-supervised eight, 25, supervised 25 doctoral theses, and done a, uh, he's done supervising 28 scientific investigations of work. It, he's just going, I mean, unbelievable. He's lectured around the world. He's received awards and honors. His, I mean, he's, he has brought Brazil to the forefront in photobiomodulation and laser and all that stuff. That's why 95% of the research coming out on uh, physical therapy, the muscles, the bone, and the cells is coming out of Brazil. He was nominated to form the International Scientific Committee at the World Association of Laser Therapy. He's a founding member of the International Society for Electrophysical Agents and Rehabilitation. He's, he's, just done it. he's just done it all, really. But the bottom line is, as you will get to find out, his greatest achievement is when his students do well. And they have done well all over the world. Thank you, Doc. I'm going to show people right now the, uh, on the screen where you're coming from. Okay, so let me see if I can do that. Hold on. He's right here. There we are. That's where he is right now. Say that city for me, Doc. Where's that town? Yeah, I, I, I'm uh, my origin, my uh, long time uh, staying is in São Carlos, but right now I'm in, in João Pessoa as a visiting professor in the Federal University of uh, Paraíba. So, uh, it's a uh, new uh, approach in my, my career. And uh, I, I think that uh, it's a, a challenge in my, my life, I think. I agree. How far away is that from uh, uh, from San Carlos? Uh, it's a uh, three hundred uh, kilometers. Uh huh. Uh huh. Everything is big there. I mean, that, that's something that we that I came to know uh, when I visited you. And I saw you had you had research laboratories in two and three different universities when I was there. You had all the. You did all the work on the uh, cell cultures and all that stuff is going. What could you possibly do in, that could be, that would make you go up uh, 300 kilometers away? What are you doing over there? What are you doing in the new spot? Yeah, I, I, I'm actually, I, I, I'm supervising a, a, a very nice group in physical therapy here. It's from the Department of Physical Therapy. And they they have a new uh, program in uh, master degree here, and uh, they they need uh, uh, to to incentive to to uh, project the the program around the world, right? And my function here is uh, to introduce um, the internationalization for the program, and uh, I. I'm uh, supervising the the writing the scientific papers for these uh, professors and the students here. Perfect. Uh, well, I mean, you're you're the master. You can do it all, and I and I, I think they're going to get a little taste of this now. So, you you went to the you were interested in laser and stuff like that. How did you get started? You you did it before you went to Harvard. So tell me a little bit about how did you get interested in using 
you know, laser therapy or photobiomodulation? When did that start? Yeah, I, I put uh, my my first slide. You can see some uh, uh, aspects. Uh, okay, we'll you... get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, but you know, I want people to realize that you have done the gamut from the cell level to yes, you know, yes. electro my electro uh, uh, what what do you call it when you electro microscope electron microscope. Yes, yes. all the way to taking care of aches and pains and you've seen it on the tendon levels and you went and now your most recent one is with the migraine you did a, a study with the migraine that you're just going to talk about but anything that you want to, to highlight you know or talk about before we go to the slides or anything like that because yeah uh, 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 in my uh, I start to to study photobiomodulation in 1984. Uh, in Brazil, uh, that time, we have no people studying this uh, subject, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I start to, to study that uh, in clinical practice in, uh, in the initial phase, and I start to uh, a new aspect to to investigate uh, cell. Uh, aspects or uh, translational trans translational uh, research uh, using uh, animal models to translate to to uh, human uh, disease, right? Right. And um, migraine is a part of uh, this uh, aspect that I I, um, I was studying. Uh, in different uh, disease, and one of these disease uh, was show me for the student. It's very, very important to study that. Uh, uh, she is a medicine study, mm -hmm. right? And she uh, present to me the problem and we start to study migraine. Mm -hmm. uh, I have I I had a neurologist as uh, my uh, supervision, right? Mm -hmm. and he he has a lot of uh, patients with this disease, right? And we start to investigate uh, migraine in this uh, uh, scenario, right? All right. So the point is that, I, you know, you've done it. I'm going to repeat again. The cell, the mouse, the rat, you know, and the many human trials, many human trials. And I went, I visited the, I visited your uh, rat mouse laboratory there. It's, it's fabulous. Yeah. I mean, you have the, a great ability. So without, do you want to go to your slides now? We'll see, we'll chit chat about that. We'll go to your slides. No, uh, I, I, I think to present only uh, aspects of migraine right now. Correct. Let's go to your slides. Not to my uh, to show my history uh, exactly, but I, I, I have some aspects of my history to show to to the people. But uh, migraine is the focus in this. I got you. I got right. You. Right. And now we're going to look at transcranial photobiomodulation and its effect on migraine. Go ahead, Divaldo. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, uh, some aspects of my CV, you did some uh, speaking about my CV, I, I didn't repeat, right? Uh, it's important. Uh, I start my activity in clinical practice uh, with laser therapy and in the, the old name of uh, photobiomodulation, right? Right. Uh, 1984, and uh, I start my first research in the area of uh, in, in this area, right? In 1986, two years after, right? I start the research exactly in the lab, uh, everything at uh, that time in my country here in Brazil. A few people use or knew uh, these technologies, 
and uh, it was very difficult to to introduce these concepts uh, in my uh, observation my research observation in the congress or, or events in the different fields of the science right uh, especially that uh, not dedicate of uh, to photobiomodulation or laser therapy mm. right uh, in that time uh, laser therapy, it's not uh, accredited. Uh, uh, it's, uh, there is a lot of discredit at the beginning of laser mm, therapy uh, or photobiomodulation right now. But uh, uh, with the evolution of the area and the field uh, around the world, uh, we could add some results that I obtained in, from my research uh, and the, we could uh, uh, introduce uh, accreditation in the Congress, in the events, mm -hmm. uh, the empirical uh, foundation, and we could uh, uh, increase a lot of uh, uh, investigation and the uh, results that time. My students have uh, won several awards that uh, you could, could uh, speak about uh, in national and international congress and I, I have I, I'm part of the board of Walt and uh, I, I could introduce my presentation right now right it's it's very important to to present as a pilot stud okay. because uh, it's not uh, we have a, a few uh, participants, a few volunteers in this uh, period right now. Right. Uh, I need to introduce more volunteers to to uh, have a, a, a very important results to present in, in uh, publication, uh, good publication mm -hmm. after uh, that. Uh, migraine, you know, it's uh, one the most prevalent uh, medical illness in the world. Uh, affects about 10 or 12 percent of the world's adult population, uh, and it generates a very high cost of uh, health system, uh, and it's a it consider it uh, in the 10 top uh, most common disorders. It's very important to uh, know about that. And uh, World uh, Health Organization ranks migraine of the third most prevalent medical condition and the second most disability, disabling uh, neurological disorder in the world. Oh. It's very, very important, right? Right. The pathophysiology of uh, the migraine. Uh, it, it's uh, many people knows about that. Uh, they feel uh, the migraine. Uh, it's a chronic par paroxysmal uh, neurological disorder uh, characterized by a multi-phase attacks of head pain and, and myriads of, of neurological symptoms. It's very important. A lot of symptoms the patients have. Begins with uh, pre premonitor symptoms hours of days before the onset of pain. The most common premonitor symptom include fatigue, impaired concentration, neck stiffness, right? Mm -hmm. However, other psychological uh, anxiety, uh, depression, irritability, arousal, uh, neurological uh, symptoms like photophobia, and cranial uh, and parasympathetic uh, symptoms like lacrimation, uh, in, and maybe general symptoms like uh, whining, uh, urination, nausea, and diarrhea and food cravings. 
it's possible to to found you can of course you can see occurs before the onset pain it's uh, the period uh, before the the onset pain right prodrome yes yes exactly uh, the this identification of premonitor symptoms the prodromes uh, could enable behavior and treatment approach that could mitigate or prevent the headache, headache phase of migraine. These patients, uh, lot of, a lot of these patients, uh, take the uh, medicine to prevent the um, onset pain, the, the phase, the more intense pain phase, right? Correct. Uh, the migraine headache is often reported by patients to be unilateral, throbbing, unilateral 6%, 5%, 50 50% throbbing, and aggravated by physical activity, 90% per, or head, head movement, mm -hmm. movement. Correct. It's very important. Uh, intense physical activity can evoke pain in this patient patients right uh, the headache can change sides during or between attacks it's very important the pain intensity is a, at least moderate us are severe during attacks in most pain patients right correct uh, the median time to peak intensity of the pain is one hour, and the median duration is 24 hours. Right. The duration of migraine headache can range from 4 to 6, 72 hours in adults and 2 to 48 hours in children. It's very intense pain, uh, 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 it's, uh, the people feel not uh, feeling good to, to go to work, to, to the job, uh, everything is not good to these people. Correct. A fundamental, fundamental question in migraine pathogenesis is whether and by what mechanism the trigeminal vascular system becomes activated as a result of central changes that occur during the premonitor or hour phase. Mm -hmm. Right? Correct. In migraine with aura, in many Patients feel that hour before. The prevailing hypothesis is that cortical spreading depression that was a Brazilian discovery from Dr. Carneiro Leon, right? It's from here, from Nor Norway's uh, scientist. It's a natural event that leads to activation of meningeal nociceptors. It's very, very important. This um, cortical spreading depression, uh, spraying the depression for the brain, and uh, this uh, depression uh, activating uh, the noxial, noxial uh, uh, trigeminal vascular system. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. Uh, it, uh, the vascular aspect is very important in the, this uh, uh, problem. Mm -hmm. It's um, how to spray, uh, spray, spray the, 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 uh, that, that event, that, that uh, trigeminal vascular uh, uh, activating system. It's here, you can see uh, the system that uh, trigger the 
paying system mm -hmm. going the action of pain including uh, uh, the cortical areas of the brain right correct the, this uh, this problem uh, you can see for example uh, this pre uh, preclinical studies uh, and uh, functional imaging studies uh, have provided evidence for the role of multiple cortical areas like the encephalon, especially hypothalamus and certain brainstem nuclei uh, in the modulation of the nociceptive process processing symptoms of the premonitory phase like area and photophobia can start for this, uh, this uh, uh, activation system. For example, here you can see uh, photophobia in the uh, ocular system, right? And you can uh, feel some aspect of uh, hypothalamic uh, uh, feelings, for example, uh, symptoms, right? Uh, diarrhea and diarrhea or right. uh, nausea or something like that you can feel, feel for this uh, explanation right well, yeah so in uh, you talking go back one second there one slide all right uh, uh, so what you're saying is that it's a it's a process so you may have one part of the brain that's going to be uh, activated in the prodromal phase and then, as it spreads, it's going to have other areas of the of the of the you know the, the brainstem. Everything they're going to come into effect and give you the rest of it. And so yes. it's a way. So so what so what happens is that if you can catch it in the early phase, it's not really going to be. We can say maybe not cortical spreading, but it's a brain phenomenon. You know, yes. migraine is a brain pain. You know what I yes, mean? Yes, yes. Including so this is a good integration. Pain. You can see here, including vas vessels from outside of the brain, inside and outside of the brain, right? Yep. I think this you is can a, see yep. a lot of vessels uh, changing. The, you can see many patients uh, uh, feeling something like uh, uh, pulsating. Uh, pain like uh, uh, yeah. they, they feel something like the uh, the uh, they feel their heart beats in the, the, in in their the head. Brain. they feel right? the, heart, the heartbeat in their head and it hurts yeah, every time yes. exactly right mm -hmm. uh, for this reason we choose to irradiate exactly this area exactly this area right this somewhat sensorial area okay okay it's our choice okay uh, we we have a lot of uh, results you could see a lot of people talking about uh, different results in different uh, technologies using transcranial uh, photobiomodulation you can see um, light uh, transmitting through the skull, right? Mm -hmm. It's my case, I, I use exactly this uh, technology, right? You can see uh, fiber, fiber optics uh, or intranasal irradiation or intraoral. It's a uh, different uh, kinds of irradiation uh, to achieve the different parts of the brain, okay. But uh, for uh, some other sensory area, I uh, could uh, use this kind of uh, irradiation, right? Right. The hypothesis to use uh, this uh, effect is, uh, you can see uh, a lot of uh, Dr. Hamlin, my supervisor uh, in Harvard, uh, in the Women Center for Photo Medicine, uh, put uh, could uh, 
present this uh, paper uh, showing different aspects of uh, PBM, transcranial PBM effects. I, I believe uh, in some of these effects. Uh, my, uh, he present these effects for um, uh, TBI, Correct. Uh, traumatic brain injury, but we can see these effects in different uh, photo uh, bio, biomodulation, irradiation, uh, transcranial, in transcranial aspects, right? The light is going to do it, that's right. Yeah, yeah, you can see exactly these effects in, in the neurons and uh, the vessels as well. We can see uh, different aspects of, uh, um, for example, you can see angiogenesis, uh, different uh, aspects of uh, stimulation, photobiostimulation for neuroprogenitor cells. You can see uh, different, um, uh, uh, how to see, uh, to say, um, uh, point to uh, it. Point to it. I'll tell yeah, you. Uh, uh, nerve growth factors uh, activated activated from from uh, uh, light. Right. Uh, BDNF. Uh, right. Well, we can see that they're going to have a reduce the neural excitability, which is part of what you're looking at. Reduce the edema, which is a yeah. Reduce the neural inflammation, which is going to make those exactly. vessels get tight. Exactly. So all, all the stuff that you're dealing with with a migraine, a temporary event, is the same as what they're looking at with a permanent type of event. Bang! Do you want to? Yeah. Do, it's a transient injury. Yes, yes, yes. But we can we can stimulate different aspects of uh, of uh, neuroplasticity. In the brain, and we can rearrange the the pain mechanism inside. Nice. Very important. Uh, it's my idea. Very nice. I, I will present my my hypothesis in the in the final of presentation right now. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, my 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 idea uh, was based in this paper. The red and near infrared light can uh, achieve the deep brain, right? It, it's very important. You can see the results of this paper uh, showing uh, the uh, you can put light, including the, the transmitting from uh, through the skull, and you can go uh, to. Uh, to put light inside the brain. Uh, you can see nice. many measurements here uh, showing the possibility to, to do that, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And my, my uh, uh, what I need to do is not go to a deep brain, but is the superficial brain right now, the, the uh, the cortex, the, the visual uh, cort the, the sensory motor, sensorial uh, cortex, primary sensorial cortex, right? Okay. It's my my uh, uh, target, right? Correct. And it's okay. Uh, we can see here the results of this this uh, paper showing that you can use uh, red light or infrared light i i chose red light really have, yes yes because it is more uh, uh it, it's more interesting to vessels oh, that's right idea and more interesting to uh, control the inflammation of the glia there you go there you go Okay, it's my idea. And I, I irradiate uh, exactly this area in the brain. It, it's my choosing. So, you know, for this reason, I, I, uh, 
I could to involve all the processing pain uh, pathways in, in this uh, irradiation, right? Yep. Uh, it's uh, the design of the study. Uh, I, I did exactly all the ethical statement. Um, I following everything. It's okay. Was approved. Uh, you can see here the number of uh, approvation here. Uh, it's a randomized and triple, triple blinded uh, 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 study. Mm -hmm. The patients, therapists, and uh, assessors, outcome assessors, who are blinded, blinded, right? Mm -hmm. It's a placebo-controlled trial, and um, cross. Uh, uh, it's a uh, across crossover, the, the, crossover the study. study, right? It's mm -hmm. a crossover study, right? And. Um, all patients uh, agreed to participate. It's a pilot study because it's a low, uh, we have a low number of volunteers right now. Well, can I say uh, something that, that, that if I'm not mistaken, you know, it's the most common dis disorder, yet only, but 90% of the people who suffer migraines never go to the doctor. So they have it. But they don't know, what am I going to do about it? So I can see, I was wondering if that was going to play into the, so I have a headache. Yeah, but it's a headache. You know, it's a thing. You know, go ahead. Yes. Many, many of these people uh, using uh, out medication. It's a problem maybe in some case. Uh, yeah. Uh, continuing my characterization of this, uh, my sample uh, to disseminate the research project. We create a banner uh, to use this banner uh, to to spread to to the city, right? Mm -hmm. You know uh, the city is Araraquara. Uh, it was done this project, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we distribute uh, through the city and social networks right, uh, so, uh, social media, and an interview was given to the press at the university uh, uh, TV, uh, the broadcast and radio, and the, all the own social media from the university, and the volunteers, a lot of volunteers uh, was tried to, to, to go to, to our project. What's a lot of people, and uh, the volunteers con contact the research team, and those uh, who meet the inclusion criteria were selected, and meeting uh, was scheduled afterwards. We uh, we have a meeting for everybody, uh, the entire entire uh, team and patients attended. Doubles were resolved and the participants signed the consent statement to uh, start the, the, uh, the research. Uh, was the, uh, it was uh, a medical consultation with the neurologists who confirmed the diagnosis of migraine, it's okay. From the day after the consultation, patients fill it out uh, 30 days of headache diary, which was collected uh, after, and the treatment was started. 30 days before was uh, given to use to, to, to know what the state of these people, right? Correct. It's a uh, baseline to these people. During the treatment, the patients continued to fill out uh, a new headache diary. Each at 30 days, they fill out a new diary uh, okay. uh, for more four months, and including a total of five, five months of diary. Wow. It's not the uh, uh, short uh, uh, study. That's right. It's a five months study, 
right? Yep. Patients between 18 and 65 years old, both sex, uh, actually uh, the major part of the, the, the people are female because it's uh, uh, the major part of the uh, incidence of the, the problem, right? Right. Uh, with at least uh, one year of history of migraine attacks, what with or without air aurea, it's they these people were included in the study. Those under uh, uh, age before eighteen or more uh, sixteen years was was excluded, and uh, with a headache, then uh, disorders. The other, other than migraine, or other pain, uh, feeling uh, was excluded from this uh, this study. The primary outcome uh, of this uh, pilot study was headache diary regarding the frequency, duration, and intensity of cephalogic attacks, right? Yep. And five months. Secondary outcomes was, was assess of the frequency, frequency of symptoms such nausea, vomiting, photophobia, and phonophobia, right? Mm -hmm. Assess the frequency of disabling uh, events, and frequency and amount of painkillers needed, right? Right. This is a uh, consort uh, flowchart. Uh, we have uh, 13 people um, uh, assessed. Was nobody was excluded. Everybody was inside in the including. Uh, criteria, oh. and we have two groups, group A and group B. Number six, uh, six uh, people in group A, and seven, seven people in group B, right? Right. And we did, um, we can see here, uh, the base, the uh, line, of uh, treatment, we can uh, how to say uh, stage one the different stage of the the uh, treatments. Stage one is uh, was uh, the first st uh, uh, stage. Uh, only take the diary. Yeah, diary only, no treatment. Yes. It's their own control. It's their yes, own. Control. Yes, it, it's a baseline. Uh, here we did the treatment. Right. And here it is a, a period of 30 days uh, for washout. And here we uh, cross the uh, groups, right? Mm. Here you can see placebo was the uh, group A and active group B. And here the second and the fourth stage, uh, the uh, group A was close to active and group B was placebo. And you have 30 days more to uh, collect the data, wow. right? Very elegant, very elegant, as yeah. usual, as usual. Yes. And uh, the final was, uh, was analyzed everything. You can see uh, we did uh, everything with this uh, red uh, LED. It's a LED. It's a um, very interesting equipment I, I show uh, next slide. Mm -hmm. But it, it's uh, every um, uh, conditions that we use uh, for the equipment and uh, the treatment. Very you can similar. see here uh, the 
equipment that I, I, I use it. It's a ten light. It, it's used for. It, it's uh, they use to to put in the um, website from from this uh, equipment this this device as uh, equipment to treat joint uh, pain or uh, muscle pain, right? Right. But I use to uh, use this light transcranial. Uh, wavelength is uh, 66 uh, nanometers. We did three points in the skull. I could see in the next slide. Six, six, uh, uh, 60 seconds per point, three points. Wow. Two times a week. 16 sessions during that uh, 30 days, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and each session, a total energy per session, 39 joules. And the point is, we go back because I want to show this. That what we talked about with James Carroll, All and right. what you guys do in Brazil, is you check the emission of the device with a power and energy meter Yes. To make sure this is what was coming out of the machine. That's the that's the most important point. That's why your numbers are real. What you're talking yes. about yes. is yes. the real deal. Yes, yes. Uh, th this this uh, condition, uh, the output here, you can see in the in the website from this device, like uh, one thousand eighty hundred. Uh, milliwatts, but I did the real measurement and is uh, two uh, 15, 15 um, milliwatts. Right. So I just want to just say, I just want to point out that the, that if we're looking at this right here, you, some of the things that are interesting is you used 60 hertz pulse of yes. the red of the red light and you did it on the three points that you're going to show us which we're going to see in, in one second yes um, I, one of the questions i have is is was there a distance between the applicator as it looks like a flashlight and the leds or is it flush it, it, it's in contact that's okay because i just wanted to show, you said it i see it here in contact with the skull in contact but when i looked at the picture it looked like there was a distance but i know you got that so exactly in contact uh, directly in the skull right you can see here what the system that i use to uh, localize the uh, the the lab led Right, uh, I use the system 1020 uh, uh, for EEG, uh, and I, I use one centimeter uh, posterior to the points C3, CZ, and C4. Perfect. Right. Right. It's exactly that this region here after uh, sensorial. Uh, 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 cortex uh, of the brain, right? Yep. Uh, I could present my results. Preliminary. Yes, preliminary, exactly. Uh, I, I start to present uh, the secondary outcomes initially. Uh, the, it's, it's not comparative, right? It, it's the final uh, uh, action uh, the final action uh, in the proportion of uh, in relation in relation of the total is the number of patients uh, triggering using triggering factors like stress eight uh, 62 percent right mm -hmm. prolonged fasting it's very important factor 30 46 percent six patients Sleep a bit, five fifty-four percent. Or that's the right? that's the lack of sleep, right? Lack yeah, of sleep, exactly. less sleep. Sleep a bit means exactly. like exactly. I got less sleep, and it triggered it. And over fifty percent of the people yes. had a trigger from not from being fatigued. Exactly. 
menstruation for mm, females and fatigue you can see here uh, the percentual uh, we can see look right at that. look at that yep. mm -hmm. all right here the table uh, using to to show the symptoms uh, according uh, in relation to the total uh, the symptoms present in the initial of uh, our investigation right mm -hmm. pain in pressure 80 percent throbbing pain 78 percent photophobia 66 percent phonophobia five 51 percent uh, pain in stitch 48 percent what's that mean what's that mean Nivaldo? what's pain in stitches uh, it's a lot like uh, um, uh, in point you feel point uh, a point in the head so it was a like point right so so it's so i'll have a whole throbbing thing but i'll have an intensity right in point here. specifically pain in the point uh, and, in the head and that's a high percentage that's pretty good could you, you noted that good job yeah and nausea worse and with effort mm -hmm. aura 40 percent this patient hair has aura aura and vomiting many patients have vomiting a lot mm -hmm. yeah and here uh in relation to the skull localization uh, uh two sides the pain uh, location in two sides of the skull right the brain mm -hmm. uh, six, 68 percent in front uh, 52 in the right side 46 the left 43 in nape uh, 28 so right in the map in the back of the neck so my question yeah. is these are sort of the cumulative type they have to, because you had 13 yeah. Yeah. people yeah. so sometimes they had it in the front and sometimes they had it on the right and exactly. so you looked at it exactly. that way and so it's it's actually the average number of episodes not the average yeah. number of patients right yes yes in the episode i had two sided in 68 percent of the episodes of the pain yes exactly right yeah. so just just to clarify that but you you're correct and you, you captured it all in the data it's a great okay. way to capture that. Right. and now we can see the results um we can see in the a group a here right okay uh, start as a placebo and stage one two three you can remember the stage right that's right and you can see here the stage as a placebo increase the pain during the treatment right right and here decrease the pain in the active treatment decrease right. the pain very and good we very can good. see a, a, a long uh, long lasting uh, 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 wow. three months after we can see here the effect of the, our um, uh, treatment treatment right the photobiomodulation transcranial photobiomodulation you can see a uh, difference here uh, we could could see uh, a statistical difference right now and this difference uh, could uh, prolong it to stage five wow wow mm -hmm. here is the uh, people that uh, was submitted in this stage uh, as a placebo treatment it's nothing right right and they feel it well after this period right but the, uh, these people uh, 
was introduced with a placebo treatment right now here in this stage. This stage is uh, after uh, placebo treatment washout was introduced uh, active treatment here was uh, it was a decrease uh, tendency but was has no time to uh, see exactly before the uh, time to to have a good results is a long last time wow. So I, I think this is great. Let me just, let me just look at this one, uh, for, for us here. We see this is, the, this is the, actually the placebo group in this side would have one, two, three months of no care. And so you can see that when they didn't have their care, they went as high, look over here, as the initial placebo, the initial you know, control group, they didn't have anything. So these were relatively the same patients that got the first type of care. They got their care at the same time because exactly. this one, again, is, it the, is they're the same as when they started. They got their treatment. And then if you look 30 days afterwards, it's just like this group, 30 days afterwards, they have about the same result. And so exactly. what you're saying, if the placebo group was followed up for another three months, they would go down low into the purple. So exactly, I think it's exactly. a beautiful, that, beautiful way of how you captured this. And I think you caught, you, caught it, you caught them in a very, very good, very, very good way that you're seeing a long lasting neurogenic response. Exactly. So this, is exactly. A, this is a neurogenic Neuro response. Neuromuscular, actually. I, I, you think, I, well, I, you know better than me. Go ahead. Yes, yes. And uh, here uh, we can see the distribution of the pain intensities between groups, right? Right. You can see the intensity here, weak, moderate, and strong in each stage and group A and B, exactly the same, right? Mm -hmm. You can see here difference after the treatments. There you go. And now uh, we, you can see uh, uh, exactly after the treatment difference here nice. is important difference here nice. the intensity of uh, pain in this treat in the these patients right nice it's very very interesting results I, I think. And I know that you can do the ANOVA and look at this and see who came in with weak pain, had this, who came in with moderate. You're going to be able to dissect all this out because you've got all the data and all the statistics to do it. Yeah, you can see, for example, uh, moderate and, and strong pain decrease a lot. It's very interesting, right? Yep. And now we we can uh, see uh, what I, I, I project uh, as a, a hypothesis of uh, my 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 uh, work here. Uh, it, uh, I, I discuss everything uh, here. Um, I, I did my radiation here. Right, uh -huh. uh, uh, transmitting the light from through the skull, uh, acting in this system. Uh, every everybody knows this system uh, as a mechanism inside in the cells. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Many people knows about that. Uh, the mm -hmm. cytochrome C oxidase uh, transforming and activating the mitochondria, everything, so on. And, and this uh, start uh, uh, analgesic mechanism, like, for example, uh, decrease the inflammation in the vascular endothelium. It's very important. Uh, I think that's very important uh, aspect to uh, consider. Uh, 
the decrease in central nervous system sensitization. Uh, I have a, uh, a paper published before uh, showing uh, the neuropathic pain can reduce it by photomodulation. Right. And right. the, it's uh, uh, occurring because the central nervous system sensitization is decreased, right? Uh, we can um, hypothesis, uh, hypothesis uh, the changes in the neurovascular response including CGRP as a neurotransmitter uh, in the neuro uh, system. Neuro that's, the pain. that's the pain one. That's the big one. Yes, yes. And maybe the adaptation of neurolimb pain network. Uh, uh, because then this uh, network goes to the uh, uh, sensory uh, cord cortex. It, it's very, and this place that I put my light, right? Yeah. I put in the central part of the skull and one point in the uh, left side, one point to the right side. Right. So okay. wait a second, wait a second here, because the, what you're talking when you say the neurolimbic system you actually have the amygdala uh in that central one there but it's marked hippocampus but that's actually the amygdala and then you're hitting right where the that the emotional and the in the motor part or the memory part of the amygdala is, is you're right there in that good area so i think that that's a an excellent perspective you know perspective you hit the stuff underneath you is the amygdala. So good call on that. And we know that that's involved. So that's a good call. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we can uh, uh, stimulate a neuroplasticity in these uh, networks, right? Neural Correct. networks. Correct. Maybe we can uh, change something. And many of these, these patients, we, we did uh, a call, uh, uh, for many of them uh, uh, to, to know what they feeling right now. And they feeling so good, many of them. I, I, I cannot uh, introduce these um, aspects in the, in the research right now, but I can talk about that. I, 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 talk, uh, I call many of these patients by phone and many of them uh, speaks that they feel so well, so good. Okay. Very good. And okay. And neurovascular, neurovascular control of the crosstalk, uh, maybe conducting a up regulation of transcription factors and increase in expression of protective genes in microglia and neurons, maybe, and release of VG and VEGF and nitrous oxide controlling of endothelium in brain vessels, right? Brilliant. Uh, maybe uh, uh, controlling cytokines in like uh, uh, inflammation mediators. Uh, we, we know uh, a lot of uh, papers um, showing uh, robust uh, suppression of uh, reactive gliosis and production of pro-inflammatory cytokines and release an anti-inflammatory uh, uh, cytokines. Correct. Suppression in pro-inflammatory and release anti-inflammatory. So that's a typo right there. Suppression, you wrote production. So we see that it's a, a suppression, a, a suppression and, uh, of the pro-inflammatory. Yeah. Production of pro-inflammatory. Right. And, and a release of the anti-inflammatory. release and anti-inflammatory. Correct. Producing a, a, a control of the inflammatory, especially in glial. 
the gliosis. Yes. Uh, and neuroplasticity, as uh, as before, uh, as, you know, speaking before, um, increased BGNF and more synaptogenesis in the cortex, and maybe controlling the oxidative stress, balancing the uh, reactive uh, oxygen species, and set inos from the cells and. Um, uh, H uh, I F alpha it, and it stimulates uh, the vascular adjustment uh, in the brain, hmm. uh, controlling the 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 um, c caliber of the vessels. Right. Right. That that chemical, that little chemical, the H I F dash alpha. I haven't seen that before. I haven't heard of that before. Yes. Tell me, I, tell me about that. Yes, it, it, it's a. Uh, uh, if you have a, a, a reduction of uh, circulation in in the in an area, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, and is an enzyme substance uh, is activating from the cells, the vascular system, uh, to increase the va vascularization in that area. <laughs> it's a, a, a hypo... Uh, uh, that's okay. That's okay. We'll look it up. If, I don't want to hurt you, but I think that that's going to stimulate the, a little bit of vasodilation. And is it, are you referring to endothelial nitric oxide synthase, ENOS, not INOS? It's both of them, but it's you're going to have the e endothelial nitric oxide release. Yes, endothelial, exactly. It's, so it's very endothelial, important. Endothelial, enox. Yes. Enox, yes. Enox. Yes. Exactly. exactly. Very perfect. Right. So I think that that's good. You're going to have this vascular vasodilation on the surface vessels and, and then the, all, all these other things that you're talking about and the activation of the mitochondria within the endothelial wall on yes. these tissues. So, yes. Exactly. It's, yes. It's okay. It, it's I, correct. I like it. I like it. You really yeah. put this together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It, it's my final presentation. It, it's it's important to take in account that it's the first pilot clinical trial about uh, transcranial PBM in migraine. We are able to see some initial evidence that we can help to control migraine pain. The number of patients is still small for final conclusions. Yes, I know, but it was a cross-sectional study, it's an elegant study as we're talking about. We can see some indications of positive results, it's okay. We need to explore more about this subject using different doses, of light uh, as a treatment, and the number of patients should be greater than what uh, was carried out in the pre this preliminary investigation. And the underlying mechanism need to be further clarified, as, of course, because it, it's a hypothesis. I, I hypothesize my ideas, but it's possible to, to know more about that. Right? Fabulous. Fabulous. And here, my uh, uh, grandchildren and my, my wife uh, and my first uh, university and I did my big part of my career in Federal University of San Carlos. You stay mm. there. San Carlos, we. Yeah. And uh, it's okay. Thank it's you. All. Thank you. Now, I'm not going to let you off the hook that easily because you did a great job. And think about it 14 patients is double what's been done with the psych depression. I mean, that, you did a lot of stuff on a clinical trial. That's not, even though it's small and early, that's still a lot of patients for a PBM trial even a pilot study. And you know, I know you'll be able to power it and do all that. But 
one of the questions that I put to you is, we know that the more duration, intensity, and frequency that a migraine patient has, the more white matter lesions they're going to have, small white, white lesions they're going to have in their brain. So there is an ischemic aspect to this pathophysiology. So what I really enjoyed about this, not only did they get out of their pain and their duration and their frequency and all that stuff got better, but that you may have uncovered or kind of start to roll the ball on a mechanism of the vascular component, cerebral vascular component yes. of a low level type of energy into the brain. Because I mean, that's, that's really, really pretty, pretty outstanding. Because mm -hmm. everybody's using high powered lasers that seem to go in and do all sorts of stuff. And here you are with a little bitty, you know, that's not too much power. That's not too much yeah. juice. Yes. Having, an, having an outcome. That's the first thing. Yes. Not too many applications. Mm -hmm. Having an outcome. Two so, times a week. Yeah. Uh, it took three minutes. Yes. Three minutes. Yes. Three minutes. And yes. so I think that, you know, by doing, you know, less, you've uncovered more. You saw more because you, I, I'm just, uh, I, as, as I thought it would be, totally thrilled and amazed at the elegance of your experiments. And, you know, so I just did a, you did a great job. Now, let me, ask you, let me ask you a couple questions that I put down here. You know, when they say, because here's the thing, they say that a, a neurologic symptom that lasts more than 24 hours is considered a transient ischemic attack. Mm -hmm. Now, many of the people that have a migraine can have it for two days. Yes. So, uh, again, the ischemic nature or the ischemic component, what have you, you know, should be looked at uh, when they're doing, because you're informing other studies, you're informing ischemic changes or these neovascularization or whatever. You're improving cerebral vascular coupling in some way. Would you agree? Yes, yes, yes. It's my idea, uh, my idea. Uh, I think that uh, we can explore more. Uh, it's very interesting, especially to uh, understand more about the underlying mechanism uh, we need to not only to to understand to get uh, good results but to know what we can change in the brain to get these results right yep it's yep. very important to me it's very important really um yeah you know you you stay there <laughs> in my lab you participated from our meeting, right? That's right. That's right. Many times. I think that when someone, if, if, you know, when we have a scientist of the quality of which you impart to this work, I think it's going to really, you're going to inform, you know, our community a, a, a great deal because it, again, you pointed out, I love the Brazilians because they don't talk about their work without talking about mechanisms. And they don't give you one mechanism because they, they understand that even though I'm putting the light here and I'm looking for a direct response, my indirect response is covered by these other mechanisms that may come into play. So again, you've been enlightened a lot of people on a lot of different aspects and you're going to continue to do it. I think that that's pretty profound, pretty profound. Yeah, I, I intend to to publish these results as a, a, a preliminary results paper, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I, I try to to do that. I'm preparing the manuscript to to send to uh, journal, right? Yes, thank you. I want to you know. Well, I just thank you for t making the time to come come on and, and and. But I wanted to ask you about this now because you are you know, get your finger with all your students and all the PhDs and all the machinery that's going on, the work that's going on. You know, 
What do you think at the 2030 Brain and Transcranial Photobiomodulation Summit, 10 years from now, how do you see this, your work or the research being implemented in the research ways or even in the public? How do you see this using as the, you know, what, what is it gonna, what, what are we gonna see in 10 years? Yeah, it's difficult <laughs> to, <laughs> to respond. Uh, yeah, the last 10 years, we advance a lot. Yes, I agree, I agree. We change a lot of uh, uh, statements in the, for example, TBA. Uh, um, we uh, have results about uh, changing Parkinson's disease uh, or uh, stroke, That's right. Uh, That's right. right? Right. In the last 10 years, it's actually been like the last three years. So four yeah. years. Yeah. So you're right. You're right. Yeah, but uh, maybe in the next years, we can advance a lot. So, uh, we can, uh, maybe we can uh, understand more uh, about the underlying mechanism as, uh, uh, as I speak before, and uh, maybe to uh, manipulate um, the parameters manipulate uh, maybe some drugs to change the dosage of the drugs uh, to uh, decrease the dosage of the drugs and for that patients to 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 look what they feel after that wow right right maybe it's a that's a great perspective, and I know that's because you understand the interaction of the photons of light with tissue. That's why when you're doing your tendons, if you give them this drug, the tendon doesn't heal. If you give them a little bit of that, maybe reduce the inflammation and give them the... So that's, again, only your perspective can share that vision. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for participating. Uh, thank you for your great work. I uh, thanks for you for invitation and uh, this opportunity to to talk about my my new results right thank you so much